The Kobe Bryant signature line from Nike is one of the best signature line of sneakers the world has ever seen. And one could argue that it's really only second to the Air Jordan signature line, but we already ranked every single Air Jordan sneaker. So today we're gonna be talking about the best of the best when it comes to the Kobe Bryant signature line. Well, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm also making a video on the worst Kobe's ever. But let's not be negative today. Let's just stick with the positive. My name is Jaraman, and here are the top eight best Kobe Bryant sneakers of all time. Bang! Kobe Bryant again! Oh! Oh, what a play from Bryant! Bryant oh! Starting off the list at number eight, we have the Nike Zoom Kobe 3. So the Kobe 3 is actually one of the few Kobe Bryant sneakers that I've never owned a pair of. When they originally dropped during the 07-08 season, I was still in high school, which means I was a sad little broke boy. So I never got a chance to cop a pair when they first came out. And they only retroed once since its original release with the extremely limited fade to black pack, which dropped in 2013. So finding a pair of threes in reasonable condition at a good price is a little bit more difficult than the other Kobe Bryant sneakers because A, they just weren't as popular as some of the other silhouettes and B, if you did pick up a pair of threes, you were most likely hooping in them, making their resale value plummet because honestly, nobody wants to buy a pair of you sneakers that you've been sweating all up in. That's gross. Just donate them. Now, despite the threes not being one of the more popular silhouettes in the Kobe Bryant signature line, I personally really love the way they look. They have this super unique design on the upper, which for whatever reason reminds me of the Matrix, which kind of makes sense because Kobe has compared himself to Neo in the past. And the tech in the threes was solid as well with targeted zoom in both the heel and the forefoot, while the materials were a mixture of mesh leather and of course, that TPU overlay which gave the threes its distinctive look. All in all, even though I've never owned a pair of threes for myself, they still bring back a ton of memories because it was the sneaker that Kobe wore when he won his only MVP award, and it'll always be the sneaker that I just quite couldn't get my hands on, so that's why you're seeing them on this list. Next up at number seven, ironically, we have the Nike Zoom Kobe 7. All right, so the Kobe 7 is actually the most controversial sneaker on this list because these were absolutely awful to play in. Nike implemented this really weird interchangeable system with the sevens, which allowed the user to pick what type of experience they wanted. There was the play fast system, which had zoom in the forefoot and the heel. Then there was the play strong system, which was a full length cushion setup, as well as an ankle wrap like collar instead of the traditional low cut of the play fast system. Now this was an interesting idea at the time that did get better in future models, but it came at a premium price and the materials and support were extremely stiff, which was a very different experience from the Kobe's that came before it. And for the first time ever, my foot was absolutely dying in a Kobe Bryant sneaker, making the Kobe 7 an extremely disappointing model to hoop in. Like, honestly, I can't stress this enough, guys. My foot absolutely hated playing in the Kobe 7s. I got blisters all over my foot thanks to this inner booty play fast and play strong system kind of just rubbing my foot in all the wrong ways. The materials and support coupled with that large carbon fiber shank on the bottom just made for a really stiff experience that made my feet feel very sore and fatigued, more tired than they were. Like honestly, my, my wallet even hurt too because these were hella expensive. But with all that being said, despite these being one of the worst Kobe Bryant sneakers performance wise, they're also one of the most beautiful. Despite the stiffness of the upper, the materials really made for one damn good looking silhouette with really sharp lines as well as awesome colorways which included classics such as the sharks, poison dart frogs, and dragons which were all a part of the predator pack which ended with the what the Kobe colorway which took all of those predators and combined them into a single colorway. 
There were also other standout releases such as these invisibility cloaks and all-star galaxies as well, which made the Kobe 7 an extremely collectible sneaker because Nike would just drop fire colorway after fire colorway. And to this day, the Kobe 7 remains as my most purchased Kobe Bryant silhouette of all time. I think at one point I had like 20 to 25 pairs of these, which is expensive. Please don't do the math on how much that cost me. Next up at number six, we have the Nike Kobe 9. Now, one of the reasons that makes the Kobe signature line so iconic is that when Nike and Kobe decide to take a chance and really do something different from the norm, it really always seems to pay off. Now, the Kobe 7 implemented that drop in cushioning system, which wasn't very good in this particular model, but was definitely executed perfectly two years later with the Kobe 9. The drop-in midsole no longer had an inner booty attached to it. It really just was a drop-in midsole. So that was already a huge improvement over the 7 system. And the cut of the sneaker was also something that we weren't quite used to seeing as well, especially from the Kobe Bryant signature line, since Kobe and Nike were widely credited as the revivers of low-top sneakers on the court. But with the 9s, they went in the complete opposite direction with a huge high top silhouette, which was inspired by the shoes of a boxer. Now, while this extremely high cut is definitely the standout feature visually, performance wise, the standout feature of the 9s is hands down the traction. Now, funny enough, most people, including myself, didn't think the traction on the 9s was going to hold up because the pattern was just so untraditional. But if you've ever played in a pair of nines, you know that this is absolutely one of the best traction setups of all time. It's so good, in fact, that I made a shirt crowning it as the GOAT, the greatest of all traction. And yes, these shirts are still for sale. So if you agree with me and think that this is the greatest of all traction, go ahead and pick yourself up a shirt with the link down below. The nines were just amazing. And the only reason why I don't have them higher on the list is because to me, the colorways were a little bit lackluster. And it also used Lunarlon foam for the cushioning. And I'm always going to be partial to zoom over Lunar, but still the nines are definitely one of the best Kobe Bryant sneakers of all time. Next up at number five, we have the Nike AD NXT 360. Now, I know some of you guys might be scratching your head after seeing that I put these over the powerhouse that were the nines. But honestly, if I had these two sneakers in my gym bag and I had to pick between the NXT 360s and the Kobe nines, I'm probably going to be lacing these up unless unless the court is trash. In that case, then I'll go with the nines. But for every other situation, I'm copping these. I absolutely love the NXT 360, mainly because they were the first post-retirement Kobe sneaker that really felt like a Kobe sneaker. Up to that point, we had the ADs, which looked good, but were absolutely trash on the court. The AD mids, which were better, but kind of felt like a glorified version of Kobe's budget line, the Phenomenons. And the AD NXTs, which were good, but super expensive, for what was essentially a shrouded version of the 11s. The AD NXT 360s really felt like a true successor to the 11s, which dropped two years earlier, and also just felt like Nike was trying, instead of slapping Kobe's name on a bunch of silhouettes that quite frankly didn't perform up to the standards that we all came to expect from a Nike Kobe sneaker. The AD NXT 360 featured a new generation of Flyknit, which was extremely lightweight and wrapped around your entire foot a full 360 degrees. The cushioning was made up of a dual density drop in midsole made of Nike React and Lunar Lawn technology, which again, I would have preferred some type of zoom, but Lunar and React is better than just Lunar. But if you take out the drop in midsole in these, I mean, just check this out, guys. Look at this. You can literally wrap this shoe in a ball. That's how flexible these are. Kobe. On the court, that meant your foot felt extremely low to the ground without sacrificing much cushioning. And the overall feel of the NXT 360 was precise, mobile, fast, and light, which created an extremely fun experience overall. The only downside to these were that they were pretty pricey and the outsole wasn't durable at all. So even though the traction was good, 
it didn't last very long, especially for a shoe that retailed at $200. Which really bummed me out because I did want to pick up more colorways of these, but $200 for a fun but fragile shoe? I mean, come on, Nike. I'm not that easy. Coming in at number five, we have the Nike Kobe 8. Now, this is a very special shoe to me because the Kobe 8 launched on December 20th, 2012. And a few days later, I picked up this exact pair that I'm holding right now at Nike Town SF. And in that same day, I took my dad, who I hadn't talked to or seen in over 12 years, to watch Kobe Bryant play live for the very first time. The Lakers were playing the then very young Golden State Warriors and Kobe dropped 34 points in an overtime victory where he was making clutch play after clutch play and making clutch shot after clutch shot. I mean, he even went full Mamba mode and did the Mamba face, which I gotta tell you guys, pissed off the Warrior fans sitting next to me because they were absolutely riding me all night long, heckling me for being a Lakers fan. And of course, I was geared up in a ton of Lakers gear, including the Sulphur 8s. Now, aside from sentimental value, the Kobe 8 is an awesome sneaker visually with its engineered mesh upper, which offered a variety of different prints on different colorways, which gave each release a unique look and made the 8s an extremely collectible sneaker. The 8s were also an absolute beast on the court as well, which was a huge sigh of release since like we talked about earlier, their predecessor, the 7s, were trash to hoop in. The 8s on the other hand, the engineered mesh upper was light and surprisingly durable and also gave it a very reasonable price point of $140. The traction was absolutely killer. I mean, all in all, this was a really fun sneaker to play in, but the drop-in midsole was full-length Lunar, so you guys know me. I like Zoom over Lunar, so I can't put the 8s higher than 5th on this list, but the Kobe 8 is definitely one of the most elite Kobe Bryant signature sneakers in terms of performance and style. Oh, and do you guys remember those really cool socks that would complete the Kobe logo on the back here when you would wear them? Man, those were awesome. Next up at number four, we have the Nike Zoom Kobe 5. All right, so the Kobe 5s. I mean, honestly, what hasn't been said about this sneaker? This is one of the most iconic Kobe Bryant silhouettes of all time. So you're probably sitting there wondering like, why am I only putting these at number four on this list? Well, allow me to explain. First of all, I don't have anything bad to say about the fives. I love this shoe, but the Kobe Bryant signature line is such an amazing line of sneakers that even something as good as these can't crack the top three for me personally. I have no problem if you rank the fives number one on your list, but for me, I'd rather have a pair of Kobe's that I have ahead of these. But again, that doesn't mean that these are bad because it's quite the opposite. The Kobe 5 is basically a more slimmed down version of the 4s, which really helped with its encore performance as it provided a lighter and faster experience that felt a lot closer to your foot. The cushioning is also something that I'm more partial to here with the 5s and some of the other Kobe's on this list since they do use dual zoom in the forefoot as well as the heel. But with the Pro Trolls like I have here, Nike did switch things up a bit. They put a larger zoom turbo unit in the forefoot they put softer foams for the midsole, but they did take away the zoom unit in the heel, which honestly, I am okay with. But I would have liked even more if Nike put a full-length zoom unit in the Pro Trolls, but I guess I'll just have to keep dreaming about that one. At the end of the day, the Kobe 5 didn't do one single thing bad. The traction, the fit, the cushioning, it was all there. The one thing you could say that wasn't the best was maybe the materials since they were basically all synthetics, but the performance was there. And Nike did give us some of the most iconic Kobe colorways ever, so all was forgiven. And on top of all of that, the fives were the shoe that Kobe wore when the Lakers finally defeated the Celtics in that epic seven game series of the 2010 finals. So for Kobe and Laker fans, the fives definitely hold a ton of weight in terms of nostalgia. I also just think that the fives have the best collection of colorways. I mean, the inks, the Aston Martins, the Dark Knights, the Preludes, the big stages, the Bruce Lees, the Chaoses. I mean, come on, Nike, they weren't playing around with these ones. Next up at number three, we have the Nike Zoom Kobe 4. All right, so I'm just going to assume that most of you guys have the fives ranked higher than the fours, but obviously 
I had the fours ranked higher than the fives. And before you go ahead and call me an idiot in the comment section, allow me to explain myself. While Kobe did wear the fives during that epic Celtics and Lakers finals, the fours were the shoe that Kobe wore when he won his first ring without Shaq. And to Kobe fans, I feel like that one will always hold a special place in our hearts. Now that finals MVP pack that Kobe wore in the 09 finals is probably my favorite Kobe colorway of all time, particularly that black away one, which I actually have a dead stock pair of. I've never worn this sneaker. So if you want to see me un DS this shoe, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Jeronmon. And once I hit 33,000 followers, Kobe's high school number, I'll un DS these. Now, aside from nostalgia, the fours are just a good looking sneaker to me. And unlike the fives, they have more layers to them, which yes, does make them a little heavier and bulkier, but visually makes them more interesting as well. And I even like the slightly higher cut. So if someone was giving me a free pair of Kobe's and I could only pick between the fives and the fours, I'm probably going to be reaching for these. Now, the performance of the fours was excellent as well. And this was an iconic sneaker for both Kobe and Nike since it marked the official return of low top sneakers on the hardwood with a hilarious ankle insurance commercial that Kobe starred in himself. So not only were these an iconic Kobe Bryant sneaker, but these were just an iconic basketball sneaker in general. And that is why I have these ranked at number three on my list. But I'm really interested to know where you guys have these ranked on your list. So make sure you drop a comment with your top eight Kobe Bryant sneakers of all time. And on your way there, make sure you like the video. Let's try to get to 8,000 likes for the Black Mamba, RIP. Coming in as our runner up, we have the Nike Kobe 11. Kobe always pushed Nike to be innovative, to think outside of the box, but never at the cost of performance. And that is why the 11s rank so high on my list because even though it wasn't the most popular Kobe off of the court and it didn't have a ton of collectability, it's still hands down my favorite Kobe to hoop in. The fly knit upper that Nike used on the 11s is probably the best use of materials on any Kobe sneaker ever. The fly knit was soft, flexible, and was reinforced with a fishing like string for added durability. And the cushioning was a lunar drop in midsole, which as you guys know, I'm not the biggest fan of lunar, but I am a fan of drop in midsole technology. And on Nike ID, Nike had an option to get a full length zoom drop in midsole. So this paired with this, mwah, chef's kiss. Honestly, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I just absolutely love playing in this sneaker. I actually scored my rec league career high in this very shoe. So obviously Nike did something right with these because they even had me playing like the Black Mamba on the court. But there is one thing about these that I wish was better. The traction on the 11s is really shallow, which means that it doesn't hold up over time that well. And when I went back on these recently to hoop in them, the traction just wasn't as good as when I first got them. So that is a bummer. But other than that, the 11s are hands down my favorite Kobe sneaker to play basketball in. And that is why they are ranked so high. And remember, the 11s are the sneaker that Kobe played his final game in. So there is nostalgia value with these as well. But for the most part, I just love the way the 11s feel on the court. And I love them so much that I actually ID'd a pair for myself. However, the quality of the ID was a little disappointing. Nike absolutely butchered this fly knit upper. It's a lot more gluier than the retail version, but it did come with that full length zoom drop in midsole. So at least I was happy about that. Finally, at number one, we have the Nike Zoom Kobe 6. So to no one's surprise, the Kobe 6 takes the number one spot because to me, the Kobe 6 is the absolute perfect blend of performance and aesthetics. When the sixes came out in 2011, a lot of fans were thrown off by the snakeskin upper design. And I know that initially, I thought it was a little corny as well, but all that changed when Kobe wore the Grinches on Christmas day. That colorway is probably the single most iconic colorway in the entire Kobe signature line, and probably the most iconic Christmas colorway in sneaker history. But what ultimately changed my mind on the sixes were the fact that both Kobe and Nike 
totally leaned into the anti-hero persona and the sixes were the perfect shoe to express that persona. Now the performance of the sixes was not all that different from the fives with the same cushioning system, maybe with a little bit softer and lighter foam for the midsole, but the materials were much more enjoyable and the tongue was absolutely incredible with Nike's torch tech that perfectly wrapped around your foot for an absolutely sensational fit as well as an insole that actually molded to your foot. The traction was also something that I was very hesitant on originally since it was a storytelling pattern, but once you put them on the court, the Kobe 6 just continued to defy expectations, making it one of the best Kobe's to play in and also the most visually recognizable Kobe of all time. Like all the other Kobe's on this list are Kobe's, but none of them are more Kobe than the Kobe 6's. I mean, they literally have a black Mamba skin on the upper. So to me, that just makes these unequivocally the best Kobe sneaker of all time. And I'm super bummed out that I couldn't find my pair of sixes for this video. I think they're up in the attic at my grandma's house. But seriously, guys, without a doubt in my mind, I feel very comfortable crowning the Kobe 6 as the number one, the hands down, best of the best, the apex of the Kobe Bryant signature line from Nike. But what do you guys think? It's all about you guys. Are the sixes also the best Kobe sneaker in your mind? Let me know in the comment section below. I had a lot of fun kind of researching all of these sneakers, going back in my collection and seeing all of these awesome colorways. So this was a lot of fun for me. Hopefully you guys liked this video as well, which if you did, please smash that like button. It helps me out a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more sneaker related content just like this. My name's Jaren. It's been great having you. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.